You might not dig it. <laughs> I'm just readjusting the plant. Yeah, you what well, good afternoon. We've got a couple of viewers now arriving for our Facebook event this lunchtime. So for these, those of you who are in your lunch break, please make a cup of tea, have a seat. Um, and I'll start in a few minutes once we've got a few more viewers logged on. And I'll adjust my hair whilst I'm sitting here. Can you see me? Oh, you've got chat. Um, just so everybody knows, I've got um, Amy Axon from Birchwood Surgery also here who's um, monitoring the chat box if there's any questions then please put them in the chat box as we go um, I'll try my best to answer them all at the end of the session um, and I'll just do an introduction in a few minutes I can't see the chat box oh, it's the I've got it. Let's see who the viewers are. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. So, good afternoon. This is week one of Women's Health Month from um, Healthier North Horsham. Um, my name is Donna Luce. I'm a practice nurse at North Horsham. Uh, Bertrand surgery. I have the pleasure of dealing with um, anybody who has any hormonal issues is what I'm going to suggest here. Um, we are going to cover today uh, contraception. Week two is going to be menopause. Week three is endometriosis. Um, week four will be a question and answer session. So following this recording and today's event, if there's any questions that you think haven't been addressed or you'd like to ask more, please do pop along to the fourth week. Um, they'll all be running from midday and then you can ask your questions. Okay, so 
I'm going to um, talk through the concept and methods that we have available to us um, through primary care. Hopefully this will give you some information, education um, and empower you to be able to go along maybe to your own practice if you don't belong to us here at Birchwood Surgery to sort of suggest to your clinician what contraceptive method might be the most suitable for yourself. So we'll start off with the most common one that most people probably are aware of, which is the use of condom. So we know the condom um, is used for contraception and to help prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Um, available obviously to purchase. And I will say for our younger generation, we do have a wonderful scheme, which um, I'll let you know about, which is called the C-Card scheme. The C-Card scheme is for 16 to 24 year olds. It's run through the Terence Higgins Trust. It enables people to um, access, hang on, we're just gonna shut the window because we've got work going on outside. There you go, lovely, thank you, Amy. It enables uh, young people to access um, condoms free. Um, and what we'll do is we'll put the, the link to the website so you can find out more about that scheme in the chat box. Um, it's really useful to let any young people know because obviously you want to start them thinking about contraception and sexual health from a really young age. So that's the or condom use as one of the most commonly used contraceptive methods. The next possible contraceptive method that we all know about really is the, the classic pill. Um, and I have many people come into my consultation room and say, I want to go on the pill because at the end of the day, the pill is the thing that generations have known about is what parents and even grandparents are on. So the contraceptive pill in its own right comes in two different kind of formats. We've got one which is called the combined pill, which is where you've got estrogen and progesterone within your pill. And then we've also got what we call the progesterone only pill, which just offers the one hormone, progesterone. Now the contraceptive pill is designed to be taken in its old days as a 21 day uh, supply of pill and then a seven day what we call pill free interval. They come in a strip like this with all their pills with their dates on and the days and the user is suggested to take 21 days and within that 21 days the estrogen and progesterone within the contraceptive pill basically what I suggest make your eggs go sleepy, so it puts them into hibernation mode. So if we can't release an egg, if we can't ovulate, then the risk of pregnancy is obviously removed. We then encourage the lady to take what we call a seven day pill free interval, which is where we um, get a withdrawal bleed. So what I try to encourage my ladies is that when we have this seven day break, it's when the hormone level starts to drop down in our system, we shed the lining of the womb and we have a bleed. It's not a proper period, it's a withdrawal bleed, and that's quite important to remember. It's a bleed because we've asked you to stop the hormones. And then we restart our pill again and take another 21 days worth, and we continue this on a 21 day with a seven day break cycle. That's the normal way that has been advised many, many years to be taken. Now, the Faculty of Family Planning now are suggesting that in actual fact, a woman doesn't need a full seven day pill free interval it's quite acceptable to have a four day pill for interval. This basically means that the hormone level that drops down in that pill free interval isn't extended for longer than we want. So that's where there could be a risk of pregnancy. So you, some clinicians will be advising patients to take their pill as a 21 day with either a seven day break, 21 day with a four day break, which is acceptable. And for some patients, there is also the suggestion that we use the pill as a continuous pill now which basically means we run pill back by pill back by pill back. So we don't have a contraceptive break. We continue that pill until maybe we start to get what we call some breakthrough bleeding. And it's when we get breakthrough bleeding, that's our body's way of telling us, then we need a break from our pill and that will be four or seven days. So the combination pill as we know it is taken in different manners. So it's what we call tailored pill regimes. So we can be taking it in a different way. So you might find that if other people are on pills, they might be taking it slightly different. The most important factor to remember with your combined pill is that we never allow the seven day break to be extended because that's when we're more at risk of pregnancy because that hormone level drops down too far that we end up potentially ovulating. And therefore if we ovulate, there's a risk of pregnancy. The combined pill that we often uh, prescribed first line within general practice is one called uh, Rigibidin. And I never know how easy this is to see on the screen, but Rigibidin is the 
the pill of choice that we um, issue in general practice, the hormone level of oestrogen and the progesterone family within it is exactly the same as what was Ofranet and was Microgynon. So often you'll find patients who had Ofranet and Microgynon might have been swapped with the them. They're all the same thing, just made by different companies. So that's the combined pill. It's also got a really good use to help regulate a bleed. So if we have a woman with a very irregular period, as clinicians will sometimes use that to help regulate a cycle as well. So that's quite important to remember that often the hormones for contraception have a health benefit and can support a woman's bleed pattern. So that's our combination pill. Then we move on to the next set of pills, which are called progesterone only pills. We have three different types of progesterone only pill. And the, the, the hormone names are desogestrel, 75 micrograms. Then we've got levonorgestrel, and then we've got norethisterone. So they're three different families of progesterone, commonly known as the mini pill, progesterone only pill, um, really safe to be taken in any woman, uh, very little contraindications, um, unlike the combined pill where we have more contraindications, which we would um, unveil when we're doing a consultation. The progesterone only pill is designed to be taken on a daily basis. So there's no pill free interval. We imagine we're taking a pill every day on a regular basis at around the same time every day is good use of pill use. Desogestrel is our newer style progesterone only pill um, and that works very similarly to the combined pill. So when we're taking the combined pill and when we're taking the progesterone only pill desogestrel, we are aware that we can have what we call a 12 hour window gap. So if we were to forget those pills, we do have 12 hours from the time of what we would normally take it in order for it to be contraceptively effective, which is why desogestrel is probably the more user friendly one. That's the one we tend to prescribe first line. The desogestrel pill, I will call it a Marmite pill myself. That's my little wording. It's, it's a Marmite pill. You're gonna love it or hate it. So for 85% of women, they will be bleed free and they'll think it's wonderful. They'll love me. The world will be a wonderful place. And there is a small percentage of people where they'll get quite a lot of breakthrough bleeding, um, sort of that yucky mucky brownie discharge that you get towards the end of a bleed. And that can be quite a nuisance. Um, and they're the people where we often see them coming back and we talk about the alternative, which are the two, what we call older style progesterone only pills. So desogestrel is the one where you normally use first line, daily pill take, 12 hour window gap, really effective for patient use. And if we have problematic bleeding with that is when we would then consider swapping over to the older style progesterone only pill, uh, which are the levonorgestrel and norethisterone. Um, the reason these are a little bit more used second line is because you have to be very accurate at taking them. So from the time we would take it daily, we've only got what we call a three hour window gap to remember to take it. So if maybe our lives are a bit um, hectic, three hours goes very quickly. So there's more room for uh, user error uh, with the progesterone only pill. Now, obviously, we talked about the pills, which most people use as like their first go to contraceptive method. Obviously, with contraceptive pills, there is always a room for user error in the sense that people can forget their pill. People can maybe have sickness and diarrhea bugs where the pills may be not absorbed correctly. We don't have the interaction with antibiotics and, and contraceptive pills like we used to think. But there's just more of a, a reason that women, if they've got a very busy lifestyle, maybe the pill isn't the most suitable thing for them. And so when we think about that from a pill point of view, we have to look to other options of what might be more user friendly. If we stick with the idea behind the contraceptive combined pill with oestrogen and progesterone in that offers bleed control, um, oestrogen helps to support skin if we've maybe got problems with acne, we can offer two other alternatives to the combination pill. We've got what we call um, the Evra patch. So this is a contraceptive patch that is used by a woman. Um, and it comes ooh, uh, that way, don't it? Ever a patch, there we go, there. And that is used um, and stuck onto the body, and that is used for a week at a time. So if we can imagine, we've got our contraceptive pill impregnated into a patch, 
the patch is absorbed through the skin and that is how we deliver the contraceptive um, option of estrogen and progesterone. The patch is changed weekly rather than obviously remember to take a pill every day. So for some people that might be more um, advantage. And then they have what we call a patch free interval. Once again, seven days, four days, or we can run that together back to back. The um, estrogen level in this one is slightly higher. So we don't tend to advocate it as first line because there is a slightly higher risk of uh, stroke and DVT. So it's not one that we would use first line, but it's certainly there as a use if we needed it. The other option is what we call the Nuvarin. Not commonly known about, to be quite honest. Um, used quite a lot in Spain as a first line contraceptive method. The Nuvarin is basically a little plastic flexible ring. Looks like that. Um, and if we imagine once again, we've got our combined pills impregnated into here. So it's another way of getting your combined estrogen and progesterone into the system. The vaginal ring is designed to be inserted up into the vaginal canal, sits there quite happily. Um, the estrogen and progesterone are absorbed out of the ring and into the vaginal mucous membrane and uploaded into the system like that. So it can be used and it stays in place for 21 days with then either a seven day ring free interval or a four day or back to back again. So basically what we're trying to suggest is that we've got the combination pill, really good use of a pill. However, if we've got women who can't remember the pill every day, we could offer them the patch where they change it weekly. If that seems to be a bit of an issue, we could in essence offer them the Nuva ring and that is changed every 21 days. So it just allows a woman to have a little bit more of a control over their contraceptive method. The other option with the Nuva ring is, and I have women ask me, well, do I, what do I do? Do I leave it in there when I'm having sex? Does it get in the way? This actually works its well way into the vagina, sits against the vaginal wall and can stay in there for sexual intercourse. So we don't need to remove it. So it's a really useful method of contraception as another option not always prescribed because it is it's a little bit more cost expensive but we do use it occasionally if that is the best option for the woman and that's what we have to remember at the end of the day the contraceptive method has to suit the woman um, i liken it to jeans really you know when you go shopping and you can try on loads of pairs of jeans and you get one pair out of about 15 that fits contraception can be quite similar in nature we've got so many options um, and it's trying to find the one that works best for the woman so we've covered pills combined, pills progesterone only, alternatives such as a patch and the Nuva ring. And then we move on to what's called our LARCs, which are what we call long acting reversible contraceptive methods. Uh, so these are methods that are used to be placed into the body in differing kinds of devices to give us um, progesterone only so this is progesterone only hormone in all of these methods that I'm talking about and it's kind of what I call a fit and forget method so it's a case of once a clinician has had has offered this as an option done the device fitting the patient is then able to get on with their life with no worries thoughts or concerns about the contraception at all it's a really useful way to deliver contraception so the first one which we're going to talk about which kind of sits between the shorter acting contraceptions and the long acting contraceptions would be the use of the contraceptive injection. So, Depra Provera, contraception injection. It's given by us in the GP practice. It's what we call an IM injection, so an intramuscular injection. So it goes in the top of the buttock or in a slightly larger lady, it goes in the top of the arm. It delivers a progesterone hormone um, and it's what we call license. That means the data suggests that contraceptively it's effective for 13 weeks. So that sounds quite nice, 13 weeks of having a contraceptive method on board and only having to see the nurse once every 13 weeks. That's quite handy. Um, this has a tendency to um, switch periods off altogether. So it's quite a high level of progesterone. And for most of my ladies, they become totally bleed free, which is absolutely safe and fine and healthy for the body to do that. The only concern that we um, often have from women, and we do have it about all contraceptive methods, is does it affect my fertility? Um, 
my suggestion is you only know how fertile you are once you come off your contraceptive method um, and start trying for pregnancy. But out of all of the contraceptive methods, um, the Depo-Provera injection is the one that does have a little bit of data behind it to say that if a woman's been on it for a length of time, uh, it can delay her fertility returning by about six months. So it's not to say that it will, but it, we do always suggest that it can delay your fertility by six months. Um, it is a really good contraceptive method. Got lots of ladies using it, like the fact they become bleed free. And then when they want to plan for pregnancy, we talk about coming off that um, and using a pill for maybe six months as the depot's coming out of their system. The other option alongside the depot injection, which I've got some of my ladies using, is if they've got a really hectic lifestyle and trying to get to see us clinicians in the practice is quite a challenge because of the, the opening hours, is that we can offer the depot injection that we give intramuscular um, in the format of a self-injectable little version here, which is called Cyanopress. So Cyanopress is designed as a self-injectable method. So it's basically your depot provera injection put into a lovely little tiny bubble, I call it. It's white, not blue, that's just a demonstration one with a really tiny little needle on the top. So I put that against my hand. You can see how small that is. This is a lovely little um, contraceptive injection that works like the depot does. Uh, it's delivered by the woman herself, so she'd have a teaching session with the clinician. She'd be taught how to inject it either into her abdomen or the top of her thigh. And once again, she does her own injection at home. Contraceptively, it lasts for 13 weeks, and it works in the same way as the depot. The only thing is sometimes with the hormone level being slightly lower in this, there is a potential for a little tiny bit of breakthrough bleeding. But if it's ease of use, that she can have these issued, have them on a shelf at home, administer it herself, take a recording of when she gave her last injection and then repeat it at 13 week intervals, that's absolutely fine and accessible. The other thing I would say with both of the injection methods, we can bring forward the interval between the injections to 10 weeks. So if I've got ladies who are using the injections for contraception, but they start to notice they get what we call a little bit of breakthrough bleeding towards the end of the time span of having the injection, then we can bring the date forward of when that injection is due to 10 weeks. So it's got a really nice, flexible way of being used for bleed control if we need to on a 10 weekly schedule, but contraceptive, it can be used for that 13 week license. So that's the contraceptive injection and that's just got the hormone progesterone in. So once again, progesterone is a relatively safe contraceptive hormone to use doesn't have the same um, concerns linked to it with estrogen so it's nice and safe to be delivered to the patient. The other contraceptive methods we have going into what we call LARCs which is the long acting reversible contraceptive methods are the use of the next planon, contraceptive implant, um, rod in the arm, lots of different words you could use for it. Now the contraceptive implant that sits in the arm once again is a little tiny flexible rod there you go, look, it's a flexible that is. If I place it in the palm of my hand, you can see, I think, how, put it that way, how, ti that way don't I? how tiny that is. So it's a really lovely little flexible rod. It's designed to sit just in the top of the arm. Um, it's introduced with a little tiny device um, once we put some local anaesthetic in the arm. So most people think is it going to be uncomfortable? Is it going to be painful? We'll put local anaesthetic in the arm first and the little implant is gently slid underneath the skin using a specific device. It releases again progesterone hormone, so just that one hormone again. Um, it once again helps to switch off ovulation to stop you releasing eggs so you can't get pregnant and helps to, with bleed control as well. So this one is really good if we want to switch bleeds off again, stop pregnancy, fit and forget. So three years this lasts and I, I always say to my ladies when I put these little devices in and take them out look at that amazing little device has lasted for three years protecting you from pregnancy and helping to support your bleeding as well so that's the next plan on as a really useful device um, we do once again a bit like the progesterone only pill that marmite effect can have some problems with bleeding now 
if that is too problematic, we can always offer the pill as well. So what we do is we top the hormone level up slightly to see if we can stop the bleeding. Because we always think to ourselves, well, it's much better if we can keep the implant in the arm as your contraceptive method, because that goes everywhere with you. You can't forget it really. It's in your arm. Your arm goes everywhere with you. But if we have bleed problems, then we can obviously just give a bit of more hormone in the form of a pill. But once again, that'll be the clinician's decision based on their consultation to make sure that that's safe and effective for you to do. So the contraceptive implant um, isn't always offered in GP practices. It always depends whether we have a clinician who's able to be skilled in that um, device fitting. If not, um, it's the iCash clinic. Um, you go on the website and you can see there's Norwich Kings Lynn Yarmouth. Um, and as GP practices, if we can take what we call temporary residence for LARC. So if your practice doesn't offer a contraceptive implant, you can look for other practices that do to offer that as a service. So that's your contraceptive implant called the Nexplanon. The next methods that we move on to are what we call interuterine devices, commonly known as the coil. We're encouraged not to talk about them as the coil because it brings a strange mindset of a sprung coil in our mind. So we talk about them as interuterine devices and we have uh, hormonal ones and we have copper coils as well. So when it comes to interuterine devices, we have the beauty of being able to offer a lady a contraceptive device that sits neatly within the uterus. Once again, let's see if I can hold that up. So it's neatly within the uterus like that. So there we can see anatomy wise, we've got ladies uh, reproductive system and sitting just inside the uterus is a little tiny coil device there. The coil itself is ever so small once again palm of my hand you can see that little device there it offers a hormone that lasts for five years so if we think about a procedure where we can pop a little tiny device into the uterus that gives contraceptive for five years that's not a bad decision to be making it also if we look at the Mirena coil so we have different names for our coils the Mirena coil as well as offering our contraception it also has a license to help support heavy menstrual bleeding. So if I have ladies with particularly heavy menstrual bleeding and we've ruled out any investigation as to what there might be anything underlying causing it, then this works to thin the lining of the womb, the endometrium, and give endometrium protection and thins the endometrium. So it helps to support heavy menstrual bleeding. And also, which we'll cover next week in our topic of conversation, it does offer part of a hormone replacement therapy um, pathway. So the Mirena coil, so that's specific in the name Mirena, is a uh, contraception for five years, it's bleed control and it's hormone replacement therapy for five years. So once again these can be fitted in the iCash clinic and once again if you don't have a clinician that fits them in your own practice you can ask to um, be referred to another practice that has a service provider for this. That's your Mirena coil. Then we have a slightly smaller coil called the Kylena. Um, so the Kylena coil offers the same hormone, slightly lower dose, so it is only able to be used for contraception. It's a slightly smaller device, so uh, when we think about as a clinician fitting a coil in an in a, in a individual, it might be that the Kylena coil we use in maybe our younger patients who maybe haven't had babies. So there's this real myth around that actually you can't have a coil if you haven't had children. That's not true at all. It's just looking at the, the, the individual in front of you and tailoring that coil perhaps to that individual. So the Kylena coil, once again, very similar to the Mirena, fitted in exactly the same way, offers the five years contraception, slightly lower hormone, contraceptively works effectively the same, just might mean that you get a slight light bleed pattern, which some women do prefer anyhow. So that's Mirena and Kylena, the two different coils. Then we have the opportunity to have a copper coil. So for maybe women who can't have hormones, personal choice, medication, religious choice, whatever that may be, we do have the offering of a copper coil. Uh, so a copper coil, once again, 
little tiny device there. Um, and basically how this works differently to the Mirena and the Kylena is hormonal coils is that the copper kills the sperm. So your Mirena and your Kylena work similarly to the implant, the injection and the hormonal pills by stopping your eggs being released and thinning the line of the womb. The copper coil works by basically being a toxic element to the sperm. So if sperm were to filter up into the uterus and the little coil sitting there, the copper kills the sperm. Uh, the copper also makes the um, lining of the womb um, hostile to the sperm. So if any sperm and egg were to come together, the, the, the lining of the womb is a little bit more inflamed and it doesn't really want to have them embedded within it. So we do find with the copper coil, we do have a little bit of a tendency to make periods a little bit heavier. But for some women, they're quite acceptable of maybe a little bit of heaviness maybe a day longer of their cycle, if it means they don't have to have any hormone in their system. Um, copper coils can last anything from five to 10 years, depending on the, the make and the fit that we use. Um, copper coils can also be used as emergency contraception. So if we find um, ourselves in a situation where we haven't maybe explored contraceptive methods that we've just been talking about, find ourselves having had unprotected intercourse, um, and we need to seek emergency contraception, uh, the copper coil can be fitted as long as the clinician is taking the consultation at the right time of the cycle, the copper coil can be fitted for emergency contraception. So they are your coils. The other um, contraceptive methods that we do have available to us but don't tend to be used that greatly anymore, what we call the diaphragm cap. So the diaphragm cap um, is designed to look like a cap basically. And that's designed to sit and cover the cervix and in the middle of the cervix is a little hole called the os and that's how the sperm gets through and into the uterus so basically this becomes a, a protective shield as i call it and, and it's got spermicide gel we prescribe and that sits in the middle tends to be more used in my mature ladies who maybe don't want to take the hormones um, i've got some ladies who use it just basically because they don't want any hormonal involvement in contraception um, they don't like the idea of the, the copper coil as a device sitting in the uterus. Um, it is a method that, like I said, is pretty much sort of last choice, but it certainly is still available. And it means that as a clinician, we teach a woman how to fit it correctly into the vaginal canal, making sure it's fully covering the cervix. So diaphragm's caps, as they're known, are still available. I suppose the other thing to touch on that I haven't done today is talking about um, emergency contraception. So I briefly just mentioned it with the copper coil. And when we think about emergency contraception, it's because maybe we just haven't, we've either taken our pill incorrectly or we've let our other contraceptive method overlap. So it's out of its time span of being used for contraception. We find ourselves in a situation where we put ourselves at risk of pregnancy. So we said we could use the copper coil. And we've also got what we call the morning after pill. So the morning after pill, we've got two brands of that now. We've got one called um, Ella One, and we've got another one called uh, Lebanel, which is upside down, Donna, come on, Lebanel, um, and these can be um, sourced from your GP practice and over the counter at the pharmacy as well. So I think from a woman's health point of view, for me, it's like we've got all of these contraceptive methods available to us. We've got today on the Healthy and Oswald Show, we've got a link to um, SexWise, which gives you all those contraceptive methods. We've also got a link to um, uh, an app which Bayer have produced, which is a wonderful app that talks you through basically what I've talked you through, so you can go to that. And I suppose it's a case of why do we still have unplanned pregnancies? Because we've got all these methods available to us that can be suited to any woman. Contraception is available to anybody who needs it, even under 16s, they can access us um, for contraception purposes. We would much sooner be able to take a consultation of a young person, make sure they're what we call gillet competence, so that the, the, the act of sexual intercourse is within a safety net mechanism, and provide them with a contraceptive method rather than put them at risk of an unplanned pregnancy. The contraceptive methods that I've talked about today uh, are based and prescribed on an individual clinical consultation. So one of the questions I know that I had come through is, is it safe for someone who smokes? Is it safe to take the contraception after 40? So these are all where we do our 
annual contraceptive consultations and our initiation of consult, uh, contraception, we ask specific questions. So from that point of view, all contraception is safe as long as the woman's had the proper consultation. From a smoking point of view, once a woman reaches 35 and she is a smoker, she should no longer be on the combined pill with estrogen. Her risk factors for stroke and DVT increase too greatly. But when we think about the combination method with the estrogen within it, we've actually only got one method and that's the combination pill and the patch and nuva ring as sort of alternatives to it. The progesterone only methods which are available to every woman with very little contraindications. So they're the women over 40, they're the women who are smokers, they're the women with the high body mass index, they're the women with the high blood pressures. You have got progesterone only pills, you've got progesterone injections, you've got progesterone implant, you've got progesterone coils. So we've actually got the most methods with the least problems attached to them available to us. So we could be arguing, actually every woman could have a contraceptive method to suit her, but it's down to that testing and trying which one works for her. The other kind of questions we have is, what long-term effects are there to not have a period? So I touched on this briefly where we talked about the fact that we used to always suggest that a woman had to have a pill-free interval. And the Faculty of Family Planning, who set all our guidance and, and, and guidelines, suggests that that, that that bleed that we give you is only because we're asking you to stop the pill, to shed the line in the womb. There's no actual health benefits, really, from having a bleed at all. Um, some women, if they have heavy bleeding, they become anemic. Let's be honest, it's messy, it's expensive because we have to pay for our period um, products so we could argue actually the only method that kind of makes us have a bleed would be the combined pill again once again the progesterone only pills the implants the coils the injections are all designed to thin the lining of the wound down so we don't have a bleed so lots of people worry when they're not having a bleed that it's because it's all building up inside and it's going to go horrible. But it's not. Your body's just not producing the endometrium, the lining of the womb. The progesterone hormone is keeping it nice and thin. Um, it actually protects you from endometrium cancer, polyps, anything that we would think about as being maybe a little bit not healthy. So I would say to most women, the fact of not having a bleed is absolutely desirable. Um, we do recognise some people feel that it's natural and that's acceptable too. The progesterone only methods, as I've said before, absolutely safe to be used, more so than the combination pill. Not that we wouldn't use the combination pill, but there isn't as many factors associated with the um, combined pill as the progesterone only pill. Uh, the Faculty of Family Planning suggests that any woman who is in a uh, sexual relationship where there is a need for contraception, so in other words, heterosexual relationship or their partner hasn't had a vasectomy, they should stay on their contraceptive method until the age of 55. So for us women, we have probably got a lifetime of, I'm going to suggest, anywhere from 12, 13 with our menstruation commencing through to possibly the age of 55 where we're governed by hormones, our own hormones, those that we use to help either our bleed pattern or our contraceptive needs, and that's trying to prevent pregnancy and then what we need postnatally after pregnancy. Um, the other thing I think just to bring in there, talking about postnatal, is that um, I've recognised that for a lot of my ladies that postnatally their contraceptive comes a little bit longer down the line. just want to um, put it out there that 21 days postnatal is if you are breastfeeding is when you can potentially ovulate and so you are at risk of pregnancy. So I try to advocate very much that once you've delivered baby um, and you feel that that was enough for you and you don't want that experience for a little while um, to start thinking about booking a postnatal contraceptive consultation so we can start con contraception from 21 days. I think that is a whistle stop tour of contraception, ranging with all of the products that we have available to us on the market, all the products that are available through iCash, all the products available through your general practice. Um, and I suppose that leads me on to the fact that we are now looking at kind of a new thought pattern for contraception and making it easily accessible for our ladies, um, because that is what we want to do ultimately. 
Now, some of you may or may not have seen advertised um, a pill called, I know, I'm not sure if it's HANA or HANA, but that's how it's spelled, H-A-N-A. -A. That is now available um, online through most of the big chains such as Superdrug and Boot. HANA, HANA, whatever you want to call it, is basically desuggestral 75 micrograms. So basically, it is the pill that we were talking about, the progesterone only pill, desuggestral, which for women who are on it will recognize it as desuggestral. Well, that screen doesn't like that one. And it is the daily progesterone only pill. So you don't even need to really access a clinician now. You can go online. There is, uh, for Super Dragon Boots, there is a form that is asked to be filled in and it is then issued. It's going to be available over the counter to purchase, but it, I have been informed it's around £28 for a three month supply. Now, because of the fact that there are companies now enabling this to happen, we as a surgery have also aligned ourselves to that. So what we don't want to do is women to be compromised about the contraceptive method. So what we've uh, now launched um, for any of you who haven't looked at our um, website now, so it's Bertrand Medical Practice website, is there is under services, there are now forms and within that um, part, and Amy's going to put a link on, there is a contraceptive form that enables any woman now within um, attached to our GP practice to fill in the contraceptive form. And that is if she's on desuggestral, the 75 microgram pill, also can be known as Cerazet, can also be known as Sorel, and there's a couple of other ones that I've put on the top of the form that are also used, but we don't tend to stop them greatly. It can also be used for women who are on the norethisterone based pill called Noraday, and the ladies who are on the levonorgestrel pill known as Norgestone. And this form can be completed at your leisure. It's submitted through the website. It's all um, encrypted, so it can't be accessed by anybody else. It will come through to a generic email for myself to um, look at where I'll be able to then go through your form, ensure that you're um, absolutely fine taking your pill, and then we can issue your pill on the back of that form. So it will save those consultations, trying to get that telephone appointment with myself. So like I said, Amy will put the link on, but it is found now on our Bertrand um, Medical Practice website. Uh, what I've made sure that happens is within the form, you do have the um, option, if you have got problems with the pill, obviously you'll still want a telephone consultation, but there is a signposting, so if you find you've missed a pill, it will advise you what to do. If you think the pill isn't really for you anymore, and it might be after today's um, video that you think to yourself, oh, I quite like the sound of those other methods that Donna was uh, talking about, there's a link to those um, websites and the app like we've talked about today. There's also the opportunity then if you are happy on your pill but you want to discuss maybe either sexual health um, issues or you want to discuss if you're of that age uh, menopause which we're obviously talking about next week to ask for an appointment on the back of that as well. So the form is designed to make it easier for you as patients still that you get the clinical input but you don't just have to wait for that phone call at home. Once again, it's always open house policy at Birchwood Surgery. So if you don't feel that the form is for you to fill in and you prefer those telephone calls, then please still do make that consultation. I'm not going anywhere. It's just another opportunity for you to access your contraceptive method. We're just trying to do that to align with what's happening out in the bigger, wider world, really. So I think for, for that session today, I hope what I've been able to do is kind of open up maybe some people's eyes to the world of contraception, what we've got available to us, how actually easily accessible it is. We've sent you links so you can further kind of look at the methods in more detail because this is just a whistle stop tour. You've got the opportunity to, like I said, um, approach iCash Clinic if you don't have the ability to have certain devices fitted in your practice. And obviously there are practices that do have clinicians that can offer those services and you register as a temporary resident to the practices. Um, there isn't much else for me to discuss. Um, I've gone through my questions that I've got on my page and I'll just ask Amy if there's any other questions come through from today's talk at all. 
lovely so no questions come through from today what i'm thinking is when we've sent the recording out if anybody listens to it and thinks either i didn't make anything clear enough or it's triggered a thought pattern in your mind or you want maybe more in-depth information please make a note of those questions bring them along to uh, the session in the last week of October, which is where we're going to do uh, a live question and answer session um, via this method. And hopefully I'll be able to address um, any concerns, questions and answers. Um, Amy um, through Healthier North Walsham has been putting some wonderful links on there. So please follow those links through. Um, please also for Birchwood surgery patients start to use that form if you're on any of those progesterone only pills. Um, and please also, if there's anything you think that could be improved or anything that maybe you feel is missing, do feed that back as well. I, I'm always a great believer when I work with my ladies that it's a case of I can talk to you about what I know, but it's really lovely to get feedback from the female population as to how the services are working for you or how we can improve. Um, so thank you for all that have joined me. For those that have now watch this. I hope you enjoyed the session um, and take care until we uh, catch up next Thursday uh, where we're talking about uh, menopause, which will be um, 12 to 1 via the same platform as we've done today. Thank you all very much indeed. Take care. Have a good afternoon as well.